Chapter 6, Domo Arigato, Mr. Lexus. Now, I'd like to return to lean in the workplace because, like all journeys, my lean journey hit a rough patch. I see this everywhere I go in the manufacturing and corporate world. For some people, the very word lean earns a frown or at the very least, a look of dread. These are the people who tried lean and hit the same rough patch that I did. This rough patch is a sign that the practitioner doesn't fully understand the comprehensive nature of lean. My two trips to Japan over a five-year period finally gave me the full appreciation of lean thinking and the motivation to implement it effectively. In the early days of my journey, my impression of lean was that it was a very promising business tool that would help my company expand and grow into a more efficient and sophisticated operation. Using lean as only a tool will leave you disappointed. It is much more than that. The first three months took me through a whiplash of emotions. The changes, hard as they were to accept, brought significant rewards. Saving the company tens of thousands of dollars and bringing a fresh air of efficiency and simplicity to FastCap. And that was just in three months. I felt like a new man, like I had accomplished something significant. It was time for the consultants to go home. Now that I knew what I was doing, right? Mm, not so fast. These so-called tremendous changes I had undergone were actually considered very small in the eyes of my mentor. When I told them of my plans to build a larger facility, they looked at me like I was crazy. Why? You have too much already. I'm thinking, I have too much space. I'm bulging. I can't even work in here. They protested. I still didn't get it. It was at this time that Brad and John suggested that I participate in a new program. I would travel with several other business leaders to Japan for an immersion training experience in lean manufacturing. Part of the excursion included an up-close and personal orientation to the Toyota production system, TPS. How could I say no? Japan is the holy land, the mother country of lean thinking. Of course I said yes. That first pilgrimage to Japan was like an avalanche of learning and inspiration. I was overwhelmed with more information and impressions than I could possibly process. The production facilities were institutions of efficiency and simplicity. It was like watching one person accomplish the job of 10 in the cleanest, most organized space I'd ever seen. I didn't know how I was going to relay all this new information back to my people. But I came away convinced that lean would solve many of the problems I was having at FastCap. When I returned, I implemented more improvements and began initiating what are called Kaizen events. A Kaizen event is when a group of employees focus on a process and examine every step, then put it back together, removing all the non-value added activity or waste. It's a team approach to making improvements. For the next few years, FastCap saw many improvements. We cut out a lot of waste, simplified processes, and saw our business grow steadily. I have to admit, though, lean manufacturing started to feel like a grind. I noticed that I had become the sole driving force behind our lean implementation. As long as I was around to initiate ideas or to lead brainstorming sessions or Kaizen events, we'd see progress. As soon as I walked away or took a business trip, things seemed to linger right where they'd left off. It was like pushing a train. When I meet people that have implemented lean, it is common for them to feel frustrated because they can't get lean really to take root in their company. I believe that this may be the point at which many people give up on lean and kind of go through the motions. I am eternally grateful that I didn't give up because what happened on my second pilgrimage to Japan was a watershed moment in how I understood the big picture. I discovered the critical missing link in my methods and why I was not able to make lean thinking stick. I needed to get beyond the grind of being the one initiating all the lean events. And the second pilgrimage to Japan gave me that perspective I needed. The highlight of the second trip was a tour to the Lexus plant and a two-hour lecture by the vice president of Lexus. The Lexus facility was one of the most elegant and fascinating models of production I had ever seen. At the end of the tour, 
I asked the vice president a very direct question. What is the most important thing for Toyota? I was hoping for an answer besides the obvious, eliminating waste through continuous improvement, given that those are the pillars of lean manufacturing. I desperately needed to hear something different, something more inspiring, though I had no idea what it would be. The VP did not disappoint me. Without hesitation, he said, the most important thing for Toyota is people. Toyota is all about teaching and training people and building a culture of continuous improvement. We don't care about the next hybrid, the next engineering marvel, not even the next sales strategy. Our number one concern is how to build our people and how to build a culture of continuous improvement. This was hardly the answer I expected, but it was my eureka moment for the trip. I'm going to go off script here real quick. One other thing he said to me that I didn't put in the book, which was fascinating. He said, our turnover worldwide at Toyota is under 1%. And if it ever approached anything even close to 1%, we would panic. That was a sign of just how important Toyota's people were to their lean efforts. They spent enormous amounts of time teaching and training them. And in fact, on my third trip back to Japan that I just got back from, we went back to that Lexus plant and they were training 250 new employees. They wouldn't even set foot in the plant till after a month of rigorous training. Okay, back on script now. I had just spent the last five years focusing on waste and continuous improvement. Toyota, on the other hand, was obsessed with building a culture through teaching and training its people. In contrast, I was trying to convince my people to embrace lean thinking by initiating lean events. My mistake had to do with my incorrect focus on processes. I needed to focus on building a culture of people who understood and embraced continuous improvement. My misguided but hopeful intent was that my employees would see the marvelous process of identifying waste and continuous improvement with the same excitement that I did. If they experienced the lean process through my eyes, I just knew they would adopt it with the same vigor and enthusiasm. My conversation with the Lexus VP made me realize that my understanding of what and how lean worked was flawed. The problem was one of motivation. I was motivated as a business owner who wanted to see my business grow and expand successfully. Implementing lean principles was helping me get to my goal of a well-run company. My employees, however, were motivated by the usual things that keep people coming to work, such as a good job, a paycheck, personal satisfaction, and a sense of camaraderie with other employees. They were not necessarily motivated by my grand business plan. Now, it was clear to me that the primary task was to go home and build a culture of lean thinking by focusing on growing people. Building a lean culture was the missing link for me, and it's why I couldn't get the improvements at FastCap to stick. It's the reason I felt like I was pushing a train. Lean is about building a culture of continuous improvement, not about conducting lean events or Kaizen events, if you will. Like any other aspect of self-improvement, the hardest part is not learning how to do it. The hardest part is changing the culture, the lifestyle, so the progress is an ongoing, permanent upward course. We all know someone who has lost weight and started a new positive habit like exercising, meditation, or daily prayer. We also know that a year later, many of those life improvements tend to drop off. We are creatures of habit. Change is an easy experiment, but a bad habit is like a jealous, abandoned mistress, constantly vying for our return. My foray into lean was no exception. Not only did I need to incorporate this new way of thinking as a permanent and progressive change of habit, but I needed my craftsmen, warehouse employees, shipping and packaging people, office manager and executive directors to embrace the same way of thinking. I wasn't sure how I would accomplish that, but what happened next on my second Japanese pilgrimage sure pointed me in the right direction. The one thing. At its core, Lean is really about the process of growing people. I'm Tom Hughes and I'm a partner at Lumen Electronics and I'm also a Lean coach. 
And I've been practicing lean since the early 90s, uh, but two second lean since July 2019. So back to the 90s, I was very fortunate on leaving college to get a position working in the UK automotive industry. And first tier supply, we were supplying companies like Toyota, Nissan, Honda, interacting with those people on a daily basis. We were practicing lean on a daily basis. But in spite of that, like most people who are practicing lean, I completely missed the point. I saw lean as that classical definition of eliminating waste by continuous improvement. Pretty effective and efficient, but as we'd say here in Ireland, not much crack. So it was only when I encountered Two Second Lean that my understanding started to change, but even after reading the book, it didn't fully click. It took a visit to CD Matters for a lean tour uh, to really make that change. After the morning meeting, uh, I was talking to Ryan Tierney and one of the questions I asked him was, uh, hey Ryan, what are your KPIs? And uh, it's a real corporate seagull question. And uh, what he said back to me, like really shocked me. He was like, uh, uh, we don't really worry about that, Tom. All we do is uh, focus on growing the people and we just find that the rest comes. And uh, thankfully I've been using my head since then and at Lumen and with the companies that I coach, the first priority is focusing on growing and developing the people, focusing on building the culture. So getting engagement with the people into the lean process is key to build that culture. Then the improvements come, then the results come. That's the order, culture improvement results. So in these early days of lean, don't be mistaken by thinking all we're doing is cleaning. It's way more than that. When people are cleaning and taking pride in their workplace, respecting themselves, respecting others, respecting the work, that's the early stages of building culture. It's very important. So be patient, folks. Carry on with building your culture. Then the improvements will happen. Then the results will happen. You're on the beginning of an amazing, life-changing journey. And I wish you all the best. God bless. A great video to watch on this is Lean Lexus. This is from my third trip. Another great resource under the Lean Library is Fast Caps Goals. That's actually in a PDF file. You can go ahead and take a look at those goals. And it just gives you a little bit of the context of where we're coming from as a company. And you can take those and you can change them and modify them to fit your culture. But at least it gives you a point of reference where we're coming from.